So you just updated your iPhone to the official iOS 7 software, but you're still trying to find your way around. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and these are some iOS 7 tips and tricks. So iOS 7 is finally officially here. The update was just released to the public and to anyone who is using it for the very first time, the interface will look and feel radically different from before. It's the first major UI overhaul since iOS was first released in 2007. Along with all the visual changes though, there are several new helpful features that aren't immediately visible or apparent. So we've created a short list of helpful tips and tricks for iOS 7. On both the lock screen and home screen, if you tilt your phone around, you will notice the wallpaper shifts below the icons. This gives a home and lock screens a depth effect, which Apple calls the parallax effect. It's neat for a while, but after some time it becomes something that fades into the background and you eventually forget about it. Fortunately, you can disable this feature with minimal effort, no jailbreak required. Open the settings application, open the general submenu, accessibility, reduce motion, and toggle the switch to the on position. This will effectively kill the parallax animation until you want to show it off again. Have you ever had someone who simply would not stop calling or messaging you? Well, if you do, rest assured iOS has your back. Within both the phone and messaging settings submenus, there is a setting called Blocked. Within it, you can add blocked contacts that you will no longer receive text messages, iMessages, calls, or FaceTime requests from. To unblock, simply slide the blocked contact to the left and hit the unblock button. App updates can become a chore to keep up with if you have a ton of applications installed on your iOS device. I usually forget to check often and end up having to update dozens of apps at a time. In iOS 7, you can set music, apps, and updates to download automatically. Go to the iTunes and App Store submenu and settings and toggle the ones you want to the on position. If you find you're using too much data on app updates, it may be wise to leave the Use Cellular Data button beneath in the off position. When Notification Center and Banner notifications were added to iOS, there was no ideal way to dismiss banners. Okay, well, there was, but we're not even sure it was intentional. Flicking the banner to the sides wouldn't do anything, but you could pull down on the notification and flick it back up to dismiss. Now you can simply flick notifications upwards to dismiss them. It's quick and it works most of the time. Unfortunately, it doesn't feel all that natural. The greatest part of iOS 7 is the accessibility of certain aspects. Notification Center and Control Center are accessible from virtually anywhere in iOS 7, even the lock screen. While that's great, if you're wanting to keep prying eyes out of your notifications and their fingers off your device controls, you may want to adjust your Control Center and Notification Center access. In the respective submenus in the Settings app, you can toggle which views are available for Notification Center, Today or Notifications views, or Control Center from the lock screen. You can also disable Control Center access from within apps, but we're not sure why you would want to do that. Task switching has never been a high point of iOS. It's clunky and barely useful. In iOS 7, things are a little bit better. At the very least, it looks a lot better, and you don't have to tap the miniature X buttons to close out of all of the open apps. Simply double press the home button to open the task switcher, and flick up, like in webOS, to dismiss and force close an open application. Looking for the time you sent or received a particular message? You may notice the timestamp is no longer shown in the default view like it used to be in iMessage on iOS 6, but revealing that information is extremely simple. Pull any message bubble to the left and all the timestamps will be shown. This keeps the message view a lot cleaner without making it too difficult to find out when a particular message was sent. Tired of the old Siri voice? I found 15 sushi restaurants in Charlotte. If so, head over to the Siri settings within the general submenu in the settings app. From there, you can change the gender of Siri's standard female voice to male. Up to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Both are still quite robotic though. Finally, as of June this year, there were over 900,000 applications and games available in Apple's App Store. That's a ton of applications, and it's not unrealistic to want more apps than you can afford. In the latest version of the App Store, you can save apps to a wish list for purchasing later. Navigate to the application you want, hit the share button, that's the square with an arrow pointing through the top, and hit save to wish list. That's going to do it for this time, but inevitably there are going to be more hidden software features discovered in the future. If you have your own tips and tricks, be sure to share them in the comments below. Let us know you liked the video by clicking the thumbs up button that is just below this video, and subscribe to see more videos like this one in the future. Find us in all the usual places, Twitter, Google Plus, and Facebook at Pocket Now. I'm Taylor Martin, and you can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.